So um, welcome everyone to our sixth webinar. Um, we'll be letting people in over the next couple of minutes, but just to introduce myself, I'm Charlene and um, working for the Food Foundation on the Food Cities 2022 project. I'm sure some of us have met already. Um, my colleague Florence isn't available today, unfortunately, um, but so I'll be facilitating. And we also have Chloe, um, Chloe, if you can wave, please. Hi, everybody. Online, who will be checking um, the chat box and making sure that any of you with questions will have them answered. We'll try and encourage dialogue at the end of the session. So this is our sixth and penultimate webinar. We've got a final session next week. Um, and we've been running this initial series in partnership with the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. And as a special, um, a special okay, for a special occasion, we've actually got the secretary presenting today and I'll be introducing Filippo shortly. Today's session is about the importance of building partnerships for your food strategy. And we're going to be talking about partnerships in very many forms. So for those of you that have just started out, um, this will be partnerships with, um, within your organization who are the key policy makers, for example, that are responsible in helping you implement food policy. It will also be with key stakeholders. So some cities have gone on to establish business partnerships. So with businesses and others with third sector organizations. And today we also have example um, from Indonesia where and from Uganda, where there have been a range of stakeholders involved. And the key is to ensure that partnerships are established from very early on. So um, to start off with, I'm going to introduce you to Filippo Gavazeni, who is the head of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. And we've been mentioning the MUFPP for very, um, well, for most of our sessions, in fact. Um, Filippo previously was an advisor to the vice mayor in Milan, and we'll be talking about how um, stakeholders have been involved in the development and the execution of the pact. So over to you, Filippo. Thank you so much, Shaline, and good morning, everyone. Uh, we are very happy to be here with you today and also uh, very happy to be partner of this tremendous uh, series of webinar that uh, we have organized together. So thank you so much. We are very satisfied with it. Uh, let me share my presentation. I will um, tell you something about the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact and then give you some tangible example of how important it is to involve partners. So um, the Milan Pact is, uh, let's say, the most important, uh, together with the local food policy here in Milan, uh, the most important legacy of Expo 2015, uh, which the main aim was feeding the planet energy for life. And basically is a global commitment of cities, of mayors, that are working together towards more sustainable urban food systems. Uh, it is a very tangible platform to exchange uh, of exchange among cities and also among uh, uh, stakeholders of, of the food system. Uh, why is tangible in our opinion? Because it gives, let's say, uh, the possibility to cities to speak the same language and share the same concerns and priorities through uh, 37 recommended actions that are clustered in six categories of the pact. You can you can see so. This gives uh, in, in this slide. So this is uh, uh, an example of, on uh, uh, how we work on the food system with an holistic approach. So we start from governance, that is maybe the most relevant category uh, for the webinar today. Uh, then, uh, so how to involve stakeholders, how to create a, a food strategy or a food council. Then we have sustainable diets and nutrition. So uh, how to work, for example, on uh, school meals or on dietary guidelines, social and economic equity, how food can be used by cities uh, to uh, let's say be a tool of, uh, um, for let's say, uh, involve marginalized citizens or fragile cities. 
Then we have food production, so the, the example of uh, urban and very urban agriculture, um, and then food supply, food supply and distribution, so the logistic of food, the food markets and, and food waste, all the action connected, connected to prevent food waste. So this is a glimpse of uh, the PACT activities. Uh, we have more than 200 signatory cities uh, divided in, in uh, six regions of the Milan PACT. And we have organized until now many uh, regional and uh, in, uh, global, let's say, forum in which cities and stakeholders are working together in thematic, let's say, on thematic issues to uh, go ahead and meet uh, uh, the, our common goals and the 2030 agenda. We have also uh, 13 steering committee members uh, that uh, guarantee, let's say, the governance of the pact and uh, the city of Bandung, here represented by Papa Gengen, is a member of the steering committee uh, from uh, Asia Pacific. So I mentioned uh, the importance of meeting, uh, of our meetings. Uh, it's a moment, you can see here some picture from 2015 to 2020 uh, of uh, cities, uh, cities officer, mayors and stakeholders that uh, are uh, meeting every, every year uh, at a global level uh, to work on, uh, on, on our food systems. Let me anticipate that uh, the, next, the next global forum that uh, is open to signatory cities and to the PAC stakeholder will take place uh, in October, from the 19th to the uh, 21st of October in Barcelona. And it will be a very important moment uh, to, of, of exchange on uh, the food and climate nexus. Um, this is the, let's say, the distribution of the, uh, of our, let's say, regional area of work. And uh, you can see in the, in the, in the slide also the steering committee members that uh, have been, uh, let's say, uh, elected by uh, our, our network, our cities. So uh, another very important tool that we uh, that we have, and it is very useful also to share knowledge um, as we are doing today after after this slide, is the Milan Pact Award. It's a, a prize, let's say, promoted by the city of uh, of Milan that asks signatory cities to submit their best food practices uh, every year, and uh, an international. Uh, committee, let's say, of experts that are, let's say, our partners, uh, let's say, uh, select uh, the most innovative one and award them with a monetary prize. The, the money is used to transfer the knowledge to other cities in need, let's say, of, uh, of, of learning a specific practice. So the 370 practices that we have collected until now are our common knowledge. Uh, it's a library uh, that we um, make available for signatory cities to uh, build partnership and advance on the sustainability of the, of the food system. Um, it is very important, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, so just one quick thing about uh, the PACT uh, is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, a free and open network of mayor, and there are no, uh, no fees, let's say, to join the PACT, but what we ask uh, is to uh, be active and proactive. So, uh, we ask signatory cities to learn and exchange continuously to make this network uh, very, very active. Um, to give you uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, focus on the importance of, uh, of the partners' involvement within the pact, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have uh, a dedicated uh, um, category that is governance, in which we uh, ask let's say, cities to um, create their partnership uh, in the local context. In the local context, we have a lot of cities that are sharing their best practices on how they are doing this. At the same time, uh, we are, as a Milan Pact Secretariat, uh, create, let's say, uh, we are catalyzing uh, the partner, uh, a lot of uh, partners 
for the benefit, of course, of signatory cities. We have international organizations such as the such as FAO, the WFP, the WHO, uh, a lot of NGOs such as the Le Mercato Foundation, the Food Foundation, uh, the Aid Foundation, Gay and Rua. Uh, many, let's say, academia and the re uh, research center, and also um, we are uh, focusing our attention now also on involving regional organization uh, thanks to uh, the involvement, let's say, of our uh, um, steering committee member at the regional level. So all this uh, variety, let's say, of actors that are working with us uh, are uh, and very uh, fundamental added value for uh, signatory cities because we can, uh, let's say, uh, take uh, all the inputs, the, the knowledge that the different stakeholders uh, give us and transfer them to, uh, to the city. So we go from this, and also this is useful to guarantee the holistic approach that I mentioned at the beginning that the, and that you can see in the in this six category of action. So we go from governance through uh, the university to the food waste that is the last one, for example, through the LMA Carton Foundation. Um, and um, you can understand also the importance of involving partners uh, at a, let's say network level. Um, if I if I say you that uh, quite half of the organization of the Barcelona Forum is let's say in charge uh, of um, the the partners. So. Uh, many our partners have uh, should let's say uh, develop together with us the parallel session where they with a thematic let's say uh, approach uh, on different issues such as nutrition, uh, health, uh, food infrastructure, and and many others. So if you join then the Barcelona Forum, you will uh, immediately understand how how important it is to have the stakeholder in this process. Um, to go on the conclusion, uh, I mentioned that uh, it's, we are pushing, let's say, um, through our category of governance cities to uh, create their own uh, network of, of partners at the local level for, for many reasons. And uh, I can give you some very say, concrete example deriving from the Milan Pact Awards. Uh, and one important thing is that uh, the most, let's say, participated on the Milan, in the Milan Pact Awards, the most participated uh, um, category is governance. So um, signatory cities are aware of uh, the importance of build, let's say, a strategy to, uh, with the partners as a first step to develop uh, a, a food strategy within their cities. Um, so, involving uh, stakeholders, you um, by involving stakeholders, uh, uh, you can have uh, uh, you can have guaranteed, let's say, an holistic approach of your strategy, of your or your food strategies, because you can, let's say, pick from production, from waste management, from logistic, uh, all the partners that you need. Uh, at the same time, uh, you will involve, let's say, part of your city uh, in, uh, in the work that you are done. Uh, and this, at the same time, is very important for the political engagement. Because if uh, you are able to involve in your strategy, in, the, uh, in writing, also in, implement, in the implementation of your food strategy, uh, you will uh, have, let's say, uh, the, a part of the city, uh, the city that this with food together with you in your strategy, and this give you, give to your strategy and to your work, uh, the political engagement of, uh, for example, the elected official that you need uh, to uh, strengthen your food strategy and also to allow maybe uh, your food strategy also to pass over uh, the change of mayors in, in the time, because you have your city. Um, uh, other two uh, important things is that by involving stakeholders, you can give, as we are doing in the, in the, in the pact, you can take also uh, competence from different actors. So you can uh, have the academia, for example, at your side, as it is for, for example, in Bandung with the Paragayang University, to uh, monitoring 
uh, your achievement, your food strategy, and give us scientific, for example, uh, uh, value to, uh, to your policies. Or, for example, as we are doing uh, in Europe, you can build also local consortia uh, to uh, participate in international uh, call for funding, such as uh, the, 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 uh, the call for funding that uh, the European Union issue uh, for, for cities. And uh, lastly, uh, it is very important uh, for the resilience of your food system. By having the, the key stakeholders with you, we have learned from, uh, well, from the emergency and I learned it during the first wave of the pandemic when the COVID hit uh, Milan, let's say, as first city uh, after, after, well, after China. Uh, in two, three days, we were able to create uh, a completely new uh, food aid system by, let's say, uh, using the knowledge and the contacts and the partners that, uh, we, that we have in our food policy. So we use, uh, let's say, the, the, the capability, let's say, of the, of the stakeholder that can be logistic capability, uh, infrastructure uh, capabilities and, and knowledge capability to, to build during the emergency uh, to be resilient, uh, 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 an immediate and prompt response. Just two things uh, to highlight before concluding is that uh, uh, taking con in consideration that it's okay, let's say it's great to involve stakeholders, but uh, um, taking consideration to uh, have quality and not just quantity. Uh, so you should, let's say, choose uh, the most important one because then they will be they will be your partner. So they will be, let's say, your logo pairs, and you should, let's say, choose carefully. Uh, the last thing is about uh, the private sector involvement that is fundamental, uh, but it cannot be easy, let's say, for public institution. It can be very complicated. So uh, you should not, let's say, um, you should still involve, try to involve the private sector, even if, if it's not easy, at least at the beginning, by involving in your, also in your food strategy, the relevant body inside your institution, that could be maybe the secretary general, that can, let's say, help you in understanding the, let's say, the legal procedures that can help you to having also the private sector in your food strategy. We have a lot of examples of uh, involvement of stakeholders through the Milan Pact Awards uh, that, let's say, uh, start from establishing a food council or establish, establishing a different bodies, let's say, to, uh, um, like, for example, Berlin or Baltimore that created uh, many, uh, three, let's say, um, institution to uh, to work with uh, with partners or creating for example community of practices uh, as we are doing here in milan all this knowledge is uh, uh, available let's say on our website uh, in the milan back Award section and if there are some questions uh, uh, specific questions i will i will be happy to answer and uh, I will leave the floor to uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, for Portal and Bandu that can, uh, let's say, uh, tell you about their specific uh, uh, partner involvement in their cities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Filippo for that um, comprehensive um, summary of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. And we um, have definitely benefited from being signatories. So I'm based in a city called Birmingham. And Birmingham has been a signatory, I think, for the past five years. And it's as a result of participating in this um, partnership that our own city food strategy and food policy has progressed. So we secured political commitment for food policy by joining this partnership. We also then partnered with a city in India and that learning partnership led to the Food Cities 2022 initiative, which you're all participating in. And through this um, the initiation of this work, we've established a whole range of partners and stakeholders. So at the city level, we have something called a Healthier Food City Forum, which involves academics, 
It involves third sector partners. And we are now also looking into setting up a business sub forum. So um, the incredible thing about the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact is that it, it was signing up to the pact and looking at how we work together with others that triggered um, this whole series of events. So thanks, Filippo. And if there are any questions about signing up to the pact, um, um, we'll be happy to come back at the end to ask those. So next, we are going to be moving on to um, Director Gingin Gananja, who is Head of Food Security and Agriculture at Bandung City in Indonesia. Um, and he will be presenting also on um, partnerships in the city. So over to you. Yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in here, uh, 5 uh, 20 p.m. o'clock. So, so we. So I uh, say maybe with uh, not just uh, me, but I with uh, Mr. Uh, Piu Sugeng Prasetyo and Bu. Uh, Mrs. Teresia from Parahyangan University also with sharing uh, about uh, how to Bandung uh, realizing uh, as a, what we call a food smart city. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I first say about uh, the development uh, process in the city of Bandung is built on three uh, pillars, uh, decentralization, innovation, and collaboration. In this uh, webinar, uh, we will discuss one of the government approaches to using the pentahelix, pentahelix approach when collaborating with uh, various uh, parties. In terms of food system governance, uh, Parahyangan University is uh, one of uh, the players in the above Penta uh, Helix uh, approach. The title of our presentation is uh, Toward Bandung Food Smart City Observing Government University Collaboration. Uh, the other audience uh, Indonesia is a major player in global food issues Indonesia is uh, the world fourth larger uh, country with a population of about 1.6 million people however Indonesia is the world second highest producer of food waste with each Indonesia producing an average of uh 300 kilos of food waste per year uh, the city of bandung is one of indonesian major city having a population of around uh, 1.5 million people bandung city as a service city became the largest consumer in west java province uh, the, the the fluency of food from other region or we call import very high now less than uh, 96 percent of food come from outside supplies of bandung city so meanwhile uh, the agriculture land are decreasing and changing the function into residential office services or trade uh, areas. Uh, we want to fulfill the poor nutrition problem in the household related with stunting, waste management and economic power and green area in household as a local government below are our city uh, problems. Bandung City is still very dependent for food supply outside Bandung City, vulnerable to food insecurity and regional inflation rate. Uh, uh, Bandung City Food Availability Index is low. Uh, uh, 
almost uh, no uh, index. Uh, inflation in Bandung is often uh, caused by food commodity prices due to index increase of food, beverage, and tobacco group by 1.43%. Uh, uh, 63% uh, of Bandung city was are organic waste and 45% uh, are food waste. And the lack of green open space, the usage of space in Bandung city dominated by residential uh, uh, aspect with land usage rate uh, up to uh, 78%. Uh, the local government large task is to create a food system that is both economically and environmentally healthy, equitable, and uh, sustainable. Uh, the audience I'm proud of, uh, one term of Bandung Food Smart City, we have uh, food waste management tagline. Uh, save the food. We are in a mission to make the world a better place for everyone by reducing the food waste. Uh, since uh, 2018, the government of Bandung City and Parahyangan University and also uh, Recolto Indonesia have collaborated on food-related initiative in line with the transforming Bandung into a food smart uh, city. Or the food smart city initiative provides alternative and more sustainable uh, sustainable method of production, distribution and consuming food as well as a solution to the challenges of urbanization, which include a rapidly growing uh, urban population to feed and uh, screen, screening rural population to provide food for them. Recall to Indonesia perspective. A sustainable collaboration was built between several parties, including the Bandung City Government, Parahyangan University, and uh, also the Badami Forum, which is a forum for various NGOs and community groups, and the GSSI Foundation, in order to realize uh, Bandung as a food smart uh, city, as well as involvement in various forum, but at the local, national, and global uh, levels. Uh, below are some information, information as the result of government and Parahyangan University cooperation as in line with a Pentahilite collaboration. The result of research program collaboration, uh, first a uh, survey, uh, the second uh, uh, focus group discussion, FGD, and uh, the final uh, seminar. Uh, also, a cooperation model that have been used in the past. Uh, join uh, campaigns, Bandung uh, Agri Market, social media campaign, also uh, to a webinar, virtual food sharing, eco labeling, uh, research like a uh, value chain uh, urban farming eco labeling and publication bandung food smart city first and second edition and uh, the last the becoming uh, mufpp members uh, depending on the resources uh, we have and the complexity of the city issues we are working with uh, we hope uh, the effective collaboration to reach of three goals that we want to achieve. Uh, first, transforming the sustainability of Bandung into a food smart city. We still need strong support from all concerned parties. 
in order to achieve a sustainable food system. Hopefully, the Food Foundation can help us to achieve our noble goals through this forum. Second, dissemination of food smart city implementation to other city in Indonesia and Asia Pacific region. And third, becoming active participant of MUFPP International Forum, Bandung participation in MUFPP uh, provides an opportunity for uh, the city to join in global city cooperation and contribute to the resolution of food concern within the context of global governance because the municipal government hold a position where its action can have a direct impact on the neighborhood. Beside uh, policy making uh, at the local level has global implication in the quest uh, to address global uh, urban food concern in line with the uh, 2030 SDGs. And that's all uh, uh, from uh, me, maybe uh, Mr. Pius or Teresia can uh, to share about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the really inspirational case study on food waste and a real fantastic example of how you engage a range of stakeholders to, to make a food policy action happen. And also thank you so much for the final comment on the link between global food policy and local food policy and the absolute need for interaction between cities across the world. And yes, the answer is the Food Foundation will be more than happy to support you and progress your aims. And obviously with the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact, who are also doing this. And so um, thank you. We'll have some more questions, I'm sure, at the end. Um, do any of your do the colleagues want to say anything or add anything before we move on to the next presentation? No. Yes. Over to you, please. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Yes. Feel yes. free. I just make a a, a tiny things that uh, the importance of collaboration that we have already built uh, among. Uh, the city, uh, government city of Bandung and then university, but also the local NGOs. So I think this is very important. Besides, we also collaborate and supported by the international NGO, such as Recall Tofeco, but also uh, we also collaborate with the local uh, NGOs. I think this is very important in order to support the policy of Bandung as a uh, city of uh, the food smart city so i think this is very important and also the last one is uh, using the media so media is very important in order to promote the what we call it the, the awareness of a uh, smart city as especially the food smart city so we also build with the colleague who are really expert in terms of media so i think this is very important thank you Thank you very much for your points there. That's something we've noticed as well to get local intelligence from um, social, local social enterprises or um, NGOs is very important. And Theresia, did you want to add anything or we have a couple of minutes for you? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shalen. Uh, I also maybe add a little bit uh, from what Pak Gingin and Pak Pius have already mentioned before like the importance of media is very, very crucial right nowadays because when we talk about uh, COVID now, everyone stay at home. So it's difficult for us to have interaction one to other face to face uh, by physical is, is not possible right now. So I think uh, we, are, we have to uh, improve our skill, ability, our network through uh, media social, because I think it's really effective right now. We can like reach more people by the media and from uh, one people who receive like the, the message from our Instagram, they can also share it to uh, he or her community. I think uh, that's uh, one of uh, the uh, program that we uh, have done now in, in Bandung. 
That's really interesting. So digital media as well as TV and other forms of media as well. Yeah. So this, this is great learning for other cities to learn from Bandung. So maybe we could have a session on that in the future. But um, so thank you for your time at the moment. And now thank we're you. going- Thank you, my pleasure. Um, um, we're going to move on to the next presentation, which is from Uganda. So I'm going to introduce you to Mr. Bwambale Bernard, who is the Nutrition Programs Manager at Kaba, um, uh, uh, excuse me, because I didn't check the pronunciation, but Kabaroli Research and Resource Center. And he's working closely with a project called HIVOS and HFA. Um, um, Mr. Bwambale is a human nutritionist and a dietitian with a strong background in food systems and nutrition programming for the rural, urban and refugee settings. He is currently a nutrition program manager for the Food Systems Lab at Cabarole Research and Resource Center, a program implemented in Fort Portal Tourism City in partnership with HIVOS and Health Food Africa. Bernard holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and dietetics from Kiambogo University and is pursuing a master's degree in public health from Uganda Martyrs University. So I am going to share the screen so and then um, if you just, um, it's quite, uh, here we go. Um, give me two seconds. Bernard, would you like to, are you connected? Or would you like no, it's, to it's, uh, it's fine, Shaleen. Okay, great. Can you, you can share. Oh yes, you can share. All right, I think you can put it in, uh, you can put it in, uh, in a slide mode. Uh, well, thanks. All right, thanks, Shaleen, for introducing me. And um, I'm very sorry I am not able to show my video. Um, I had told Shaleen that I'm in um, a relatively um, unbearable place. I am on a journey, but I just um, had some bit of stopover to have this presentation and listen to the colleagues. Now, um, in Fort Porto, just like any other of you colleagues that have presented you the way you're doing things, we are using um, a food system lab approach. So it's also a multi-sectorial uh, multi kind of and multi-partner uh, kind of platform where we have different partners come together to discuss issues of the food system in Fort Porto Tourism City. So um, I'm going to just present to you our experience in the food system lab, but also uh, sharing with you exactly how we've been doing it so that maybe as I pick a leaf from you, you guys can also pick something from me. So I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, take me to the next slide. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, just a short background of Fort Porto for you uh, who might not have come here. Uh, Fort Porto is one of the newly created um, uh, cities in Uganda. Uh, and of course, you know, as the city comes, we expect a lot of increase in population. We expect a lot of increase in industrialization and etc. It's just a few years uh, since it got the, the city status. Um, but worst about it is that um, Fort Porto produces a lot of food, exporting a lot of food to the different uh, cities, but also the neighboring districts. But we are still puzzled with um, a very high rate uh, of malnutrition, uh, where we still have a stunting rate among children under five of about 40.6% of our children being stunted. So this is creating a lot of puzzle, why we are producing a lot of food, but at the same time, we have the highest rate of malnutrition um, around our city. So it's something that is really puzzling us when it comes to the changes in um, the food systems. So there is also, we are realizing a very high increase in food vending, where many of the, of the food vendors are actually women. And that is something that really we have to focus on and think about. Uh, many of the women are really now doing uh, food vending instead of um, you know being home and look after children and all that but majority of them are now doing food vending on the street but also we, we've seen um, a very significant paradigm shift in the kind of food we are producing the food we are consuming issues around post harvest handling it has really become something that is puzzling us and this is uh, what we are handling currently so we could move to the next slide 
Uh, well, this is just background data on uh, what really our food system here is providing. Uh, of course, we're just producing a lot of quantities, but the quality is still having a challenge. And also we are realizing in our city that there's a lot of um, cheap food, but all this cheap food is actually high energy food. We're also realizing that um, we are providing less diversity of nutrient dense foods. And so this is what the Food Lab is actually working on to ensure that we improve uh, the food systems. So um, next. Okay, this is just general information. Now, as a food lab, we are trying to work on these issues around food policy, food industry practices, consumer lifestyle, and consumer preferences. Um, Shalin, let's, let's just move on. Uh, this is background data. I just wanted us to have a picture of uh, how Fort Porto is really, uh, what is bringing up the food lab. So, and these are the drivers that the food lab is working on. Now, what is happening is that um, the different stakeholders that we are having under the food lab, have particular contributions to these different drivers that you are looking at there. So we have partners who are dealing with agriculture production, we have partners who are dealing with storage and transport, we also have partners that are really doing retail and then food transformation just like I'm going to show you shortly. Um, next. Next slide. Okay, so this is the lab, uh, this is how we are trying to to, to work in a multi-actor kind of setting, trying to influence uh, communities. Actually, we are not only influencing the government and stakeholders, but we are looking at communities down there because they're the communities that are producing food, they're the communities that are actually consuming food, they're the communities that are processing food. So we are looking at how best we can influence communities alongside the local policy makers. The challenge has been that many times we're influencing policy makers and we are forgetting communities that are actually producing this food. So we, we are trying to look at how best we, we influence communities directly and then we link the communities, the policy makers, on food production. So um, the actors of course are brought together every, uh, every year, three times a year. Uh, we're able to have discussions uh, on the food uh, system in the region. Next. Next slide. Okay, now unlike, um, unlike you colleagues, unlike many of you who are dealing with other stakeholders, for us we have the local, the local stakeholders, uh, especially when you look at my stakeholders that I've mentioned here, we have what you're calling the coalition of the willing. Now coalition of the willing it's just a consumer advocacy group which is locally made. So it's made of community members who are actually advocating for consumer rights. So it's not a political kind of uh, stakeholder. They're just community members that come together and they advocate for, advocate for uh, their consumer rights. Then two, we have what we are calling the food ambassadors. Food ambassadors are also community leaders. Now, these are not politicians, but they are community leaders. So, who are basically talking about the food systems of their communities. So, it's not like at parliament level or maybe governor level or something. They're just community leaders. They could be women leaders, they could be children leaders, they could be youth leaders who are actually uh, made in a group to advocate for their rights, but also the food systems of their area. Now, we also have the street food vendors. Now, this is a category of people that have really been left out, but uh, these are people who are actually informally producing food for the majority of the people in the cities, and they're the ones actually producing a lot of food for the cities. So we have tried to organize them into a vendors association where the vendors have a bigger voice to air out their issues on the street as they sell their food. But it's the same association that we're actually using to reach out to, you know, preparation of rich food, which kind of food is being prepared on the street. So the, the street food vendors are really playing a key role in food safety. They're playing a very key role in production of food and, and provision of food for majority of us. So we cannot leave such a group of people unattended to. And so that's why we have tried to organize it into a street food vendor association to be able to take them through food safety issues, but also nutrient-dense food being prepared on the street. 
And then, uh, of course, now we have um, another key group here. Uh, many of you might not understand the language, but there's a group called Orugali. I don't know that you can see that Orugali uh, group. Now, the Orugali is the local way of preparation of our food in Fort Porto, where we have indigenous food being prepared now at particular restaurants, at particular hotels, but also on the street. So we have organized women and men who are producing indigenous food for the population to consume. So this is the group you are calling the Orugali women and, and, and the Orugali groups. Then of course we have others, uh, we have the former chefs, we've tried to bring the chefs who are producing food in the hotels into an alliance so that we can have deliberations on these issues. So uh, when you look at our key stakeholders, they are purely local actors, but they're playing a, a very key role in food production, food safety, and food provisions. Uh, and of course, researchers and academia and artists, uh, we have actually included a component of artists, guys who are doing music so that they can really produce music on food, because many people listen to music but also pictorial drawings on billboards and all this so that we can really have the communication out there uh, given, uh, given the communities that we are now dealing with which are really uh, full of the youth and then uh, trying to make sure that we really bring the message down to the people. So I, those are the key stakeholders actually that we are working with which are really local um, and of course alongside the government. Yes, yeah, so we, we could move to the next and maybe I'll wind up. We of course we are using the collaborative framework, uh, the UN collaborative framework to make sure that we reach out to these partners. Uh, next slide Shaleen. This collaborative framework allows you to identify the individuals to work with given the challenges that you have which we have already done, uh, the partners, and then you try to conduct a holistic food system assessment. What are the gaps? What are the challenges that we need to address? And then uh, the third action, uh, maybe you could move to the next slide. We move on to now initiating this multi-actor process and the dialogues which are, we are having every year, three times a year, so that we really have space to discuss these issues together and then we strengthen the institutional capacity. Now when you look at the partners I showed you, the stakeholders, it is another way of ensuring sustainability that after these projects, the community must be able to take up these programs irrespective of the of the donors or partners that are bringing in resources so that's why we are really basing on uh, the local actors that i mentioned earlier on to make sure that we have that capacity after these projects have gone yeah so that is where we do the strengthening of the capacity next please as i wind up i think uh, this one we can skip, I'll share the slides. These are just the objectives of our food lab, trying to make sure that we, we influence sustainable production and also consumption of food. Uh, so this one I'll share with you. Uh, we could just move on to, I want to share with us now how we engage with partners. So every year we have three, uh, we have three workshops, our food summits, where we bring these stakeholders together to share our commitments or we share the deliberations we had previously, and then we see how far we've gone. But also very special with us is that we do research together. So whenever we are conducting research, we do it as a group, as a team. So for example, if you are doing research on food safety, we shall get the partners or the stakeholders that are actually dealing with food, and then we come up with the same protocol. So you find that the research protocols that we have are inclusive. So we are doing research together, uh, as partners so that when we are disseminating this information, we own it together. So it becomes easy for all of us to have our commitments uh, achieved, courtesy of um, sharing research results. But also we are creating awareness on food systems together using the media. I think uh, this, is a, this is a strength we have. We have actually even created a radio station, particularly to make sure that we engage uh, on, on the food systems. Uh, and we host this at, at Kabarole Research and Resource Center so that we can reach out uh, on food systems, uh, but also other programs. Uh, the, the Food Lab also tries to build capacity. After these programs, what happens? We want these guys to own uh, these programs on their own, so we build capacity of the community uh, members, but also the different stakeholders. And of course, uh, we, we facilitate health inspections. We've realized, actually it's a lesson that we've learned, that every time you have inspections frequently of the markets, there is an improvement in food safety. 
because the community lives in fear that, well, I think if I have wrong material on market, the leadership will come and discard it. So the, 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 the vendors, but also the, the actors in the food systems, they tend to improve with the increased inspections uh, of, the market, uh, of the markets that we have. So we try to facilitate those health inspections and then also we coordinate, of course, the food system actors to adhere to food uh, uh, protocols and then we conduct advocacy on the food system and nutrition. That's why we really want to join the Milan um, Urban City um, uh, on Food Park so that we can be member states of, of, of that kind of um, a global partnership as we tend to advocate. Next, Shalin. All right, so uh, I just wanted to share with us that's a snapshot of what we've been able to achieve in, um, in this multi-stakeholder -stake kind of engagement. You've seen that when you come to Fort Porto, we have influenced the adoption of the UN framework on food system at the district level. And so every partner that comes up with this kind of arrangement, they have to really use the UN framework that we are actually using. We have also influenced the development of the Nutrition Action Plan, which has not been uh, in place. But at least now when you come to Fort Porto, you'll be able to see that there is an action plan that the district is really leveraging on to deliver. We've also influenced the review of the food ordinance. Uh, so the district has something that can use to monitor progress. We have all influenced the Fort Porto City Authority to recognize street food vendors. This has not been there. So they are able to actually decently sell their food to the communities around and also influencing them to actually produce food that is valuable, that is nutritious, the food that really can contribute to the health of the people. We have uh, also established and strengthened key actor associations, just like I talked about. We now have the Coalition of the Willing, like I talked about, which is a consumer advocacy group. We have the Vendors Association, where the vendors have a bigger voice to advocate for their issues at the city level. We have the Orugali Women, we have the Food Ambassadors, etc. Uh, I think these have come up with the local arrangement that we've really had uh, with the partners. And then, of course, we've rejuvenated different coordination committees, especially on nutrition and food systems, but also on food safety. So I think that is, um, hoping that is my last slide. Yes, so we are calling upon all of us really to put our efforts together. Uh, not waiting for the future, but really we have to put our things together now. It is the time for us to fix our food systems uh, through assuring that we have sustainable, equitable and inclusive food systems. I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also thank you for the background music that made us, it made um, Fort City really come to life. So I hope, I wish you had your camera on because I, I feel like we, we excellent and inspiring presentation. And I'm so glad that, I think you may have noticed that we've got fewer numbers today and we think that perhaps there was a, a, a problem with the invite when it went out last week, but the session is being recorded and so we'll be able to ensure, because this has been a very, very valuable session, we'll be able to ensure that it's cascaded to the whole network. So on average at the moment, there are about 70 people attending the sessions. Um, we've only got five minutes left. Um, so what I think would be really great, ah, I can see Carla joining us now, Carla from Portugal, from Charles. But um, if anybody has any questions, I know um, Bernard, you've got a question for Filippo. But if anybody has any questions, then now's the opportunity if you could raise your hand. But if you kick off, Bernard, that would be great. Um, and um, Chloe, if you can see any other questions, then feel free to pipe up as well. Thanks. Bernard? Yes, please. Would you like to ask Filippo your question about the Milan Pact? Oh, yes, uh, Filippo. Um, I just wanted to find out how um, how we are moving on with the monitoring of the of the food policies uh, in the Milan um, urban city park. How are these policies being monitored to ensure that we are on progress? I think that is the question that I really wanted to have. Uh, the reason is that we are trying to make sure that we also have a policy in Fort Porto on, on food systems. But then we are wondering how is it being monitored and we learn from you. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, 
I will say like in two ways, we are monitoring the achievement of our signatory cities. The, the first one is uh, um, the, um, through the Milan Pact Awards, so uh, through this library uh, of practices that mayors every year submitted, and we, let's say, analyze them, uh, uh, taking into consideration like impact, data of impact, uh, uh, inclusion, and uh, and, and innovation, so we create, let's say, yearly reports uh, on uh, on um, the most, let's say, innovative practices that you uh, that are uh, that are online. And the second one is an handbook that we have developed together with the FAO and the RUAF, uh, that is the monitoring framework. So uh, it's an handbook uh, that connect, let's say, the 37 recommended action that I mentioned in the beginning, so the big framework for action, uh, to, the, to the SDGs. And it's, a, it's a, a, an input that uh, is available for signatory cities, and uh, uh, it's, it will be useful because you can monitor let's say, yourself, your progresses uh, within, let's say, the, the path framework, and then it will be useful also for us to uh, draw uh, in, in, in some years the joint advancement of all signatory cities through, through also the, the data uh, from the handbook. Uh, as uh, you said, I think, and also Shaline uh, um, said, uh, then uh, let's say the some of the local uh, action and uh, some of the, let's say, uh, local uh, uh, data and uh, impact uh, will make the difference at a global level. So these are the, the most important, let's say, tools that we have to monitor and assess the, uh, the progress on food policy. Hi, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and um, I think that Bernard is interested in signing up so we can facilitate an introduction. Um, re we're reaching the end of the session. Um, if it was a bigger group, we may have extended for another 20 minutes, but um, has are there any more questions, Chloe, that people have asked? No. Okay, that's fine. So um, what I'm going to do is just let you, that let you know that next week, um, we also have a session on creating a good food movement. So, the idea, and it seems to me that both Bandung and Fort Portal are already getting moving in that direction, that once you've established your stakeholders and there's serious citizen engagement, so it's not just policymakers and businesses who are involved, but citizens themselves, then you form the basis of um, creating a good food movement in the city. And what's interesting is in some cases that this is actually um, the citizens themselves who lead it. So um, in the next session, we're going to find out more about this and we're going to hear from examples again across the world about which cities have created successful good food movements um, and how the drumbeat for a large scale change can begin. So um, today I, we've got one minute left, so I would just like to thank um, all the speakers. You've all been wonderful and thank you so much for your contribution. Um, we will send out presentations and the recordings, and the recording will be cascaded to hundreds more people. Um, so rest assured, your words of wisdom will be heard. And we will also be in touch with you to talk about how we can continue engaging in Food Cities 2022, and also more excitingly, start preparing for the annual meeting in um, Barcelona, which is in October. So um, thank you and have a wonderful start to September and we look forward to welcoming you back soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank you everybody. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank, thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.